And here we are on another day of Papa Commander January. This time we're going back to for Big Furry's Big Show, lived by Mahadi Emporium Master. So at the beginning of our end step, create a treasure token for each creature that died this turn. So pretty much this deck is kind of a weird Rakdos control deck, so we're doing a bunch of removal to get treasure tokens to pay off into big creatures that are very powerful, as well as kind of a sub affinity theme going on with it. So for our lands, it's a pretty basic uh, dual land package, and then we also have stuff like the indestructible artifact lands, and as well as just the regular artifact lands, because we do have a slight affinity theme and things that benefit from having artifacts, so we're playing pretty much all the easy free ones we can be playing. So we are in Rakdos, so we're going to be doing some card draws. There's not too many amazing ones, we're playing for the better ones, so costly plunder, sacrifice either an artifact or a creature to draw two cards, deadly speed does the same thing, but also creates a treasure token. So we sacrifice the treasure tokens we're making with Mahari to draw cards. Night Whisper, just draw two cards, lose two life, and in Village Race, sacrifice a creature to draw two cards. We have uh, cards that ping people because it's kind of a waste, and so many creatures are going to be dying, these effects trigger when another creature dies. Welcome back Normal pretty much makes it so whenever it or another creature die, you make a target play, lose one life, and gain a life, and then hitting Igu Iguana, I think I said that right, does the same thing, but only when another creature dies. We also have one tutor for Shred Memory, which lets us tutor out for any two drop we want, so pretty much any kind of removal we want can get it. We're never really going to use its other effect, but it's kind of a nice, it just kind of combs out the deck for anything we might need at any given time. Our Mana Rock support is pretty basic, the Arcane Signet, Bonus Ornament for Draw Power, Commander Sphere for Draw Power and a Pinch, and also just Generic Mana Rock. One Mindstorm, shame for the same reason, and one Lactose Locket for the same thing. So we do have ways to kind of ramp in our commander, so our mana rocks aren't as important, so we're playing the ones that stack the draw cards to kind of help us get around Rakdos' weakness of not having the greatest draw power. Alright, so let's go over the payoffs of playing artifacts. We have a Defiant Salvator, which we can sacrifice an artifact to creature to put a 1-1 counter. It only activates for doing a sorcery, but we can sacrifice a bunch of treasures to make this card very massive, or even creatures. Because if we sacrifice our creatures at the end step, those count for the cards that are left the battlefield this turn from a hardy, so that those in turn become treasure tokens. Done operative, as long as you go an artifact, it gets plus one plus zero on death touch. Only a two drop three two death touch, it isn't the worst thing to have, so that's why we're running it. Disciple of the Vault, obviously, whenever an artifact is put in the graveyard, you can make an opponent lose one life. Since you're playing so many treasures, you're going to be sacrificing a bunch of them, and it's going to be pinging for a lot of damage. Fogman is just a free cast a lot of the time since we're going to have a lot of treasure tokens which are artifacts which give us an affinity count to cast Fogman for free. Quack Can Salmon is one of our closers, we can check an artifact to deal 1 damage to each creature without flying, so it's kind of one of our board wipes to pretty much 9 times out of 10 guarantee, especially if you have a big slew of treasure tokens to just wipe the entire field. Mold Folk, we can pay 1 to sacrifice another creature and artifact to put a 1 1 counter. This one does need mana on like something like Defiant Salvager, but the fact that it's lifelink is what makes it very good. And we can activate it at instant speed, unlike the Fine Salvager. Mirror Enforcer, exact same thing as Frogmite, just cast it very easily. Reckless Fire Weaver, whenever an artifact enters the battlefield, it pings everyone for one, and since we're making so many treasure tokens with our commander, that's why we're playing this, do a lot of burn damage. So as well as companion helps us get to our artifact lands that have more permanent affinity count, plus it itself has affinity for artifacts, so do you want to just hard cast it? And then because we're playing kind of that sub affinity theme, we have a couple of affinity supports, namely Blood Fountain, which for one mana gives our affinity count by two, since you get a blood token and this itself is an artifact, which also gives us uh, cycling if we ever need to draw power, or we can also sacrifice it to return two creatures from our graveyard into our hand. And Palfus Pilfer, pretty much when it dies, you make a treasure token, and then you can encore it to bring it back as a token with haste, and then pretty much do the same thing, because it'll get sacrificed at the end step, so it's a way to get two treasure tokens off of one card. Okay, so let's go over the payoffs we can get to so kind of like our big creatures we can play with our treasure tokens. So we have a Curse Period, which is Intimidates, which is pretty hard, pretty much make it so it can't be blocked by artifact creatures or other black creatures, any creature that has a color with it in case, because those Intimidate on other colors would be playing, so that's what that ability does. Play to Spore, speaking of, Janela 3 2 with Intimidate, so pretty much we can use these cards to attack into someone who doesn't have artifact creatures or red slash black creatures, depending on it, so that's why we're playing them. Blind Zealot, same thing with uh, another creature with Intimidate, but when it does common damage to a player, you can sacrifice it and destroy any other target creature. So you can destroy two creatures for the price of one, which translates to getting two treasure tokens. Boarding Power does a 6 for you with Haste and Cascade, so we can pretty much use all treasure tokens to get a free Cascade trigger. Bone Picker, it costs 3 less to cast if a creature died this turn, which most of the time they will, because that's kind of what this deck is built around creatures dying. So we can cast them for one black mana very commonly, and we get a 3-2 death touch for our trouble with flying. Alright, so Draw Skull, and we can cast for free very commonly, because that's an affinity for Swamp, so if we have 5 Swamps, this card is completely free to cast. And we get a creature with Fear for our trouble, which makes it so it can't be blocked except by black creatures, and I believe artifact creatures. 
I would draw the devastator is one of our payoffs, so you just an 8 drop that has trample since you're making we're ramping so much with our treasures, that's how we're doing this. Gumog Angler, because we have so many weight we're playing so much removal, our grave is gonna be loaded up very commonly, so delving this for just one black is gonna be very common. Here's a storm cook, it's a 2-2 with intimidate, and when it deals common damage it gets a 1-1 counter. So we can attack this in the opponents that don't have red creatures, which allow us in turn to constantly grow this to attack the ones that eventually do for massive damage. Cathari Bomber is pretty much a way to trigger multiple death triggers, so when it uh, deals combat damage, you create two tokens and then this gets sacrificed. You can also bring it back to an earth and do the same thing, so that's just kind of a way to trigger multiple death triggers for our commander. Maelstrom Colossus is an 8 drop with Cascade, so kind of another one, we can, a big guy we can bring out with our treasure tokens, the Cascade, and another hopefully big thing. My rope pretty much makes it so we can uh, kind of cast it for free with our commander, because when it ETBs, it creates treasure tokens based on how many treasure tokens we use to create it. So a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample that we can essentially cast for free if we have enough treasure tokens is very, very good. Prowling Pangolin just ETBs. Any player may sacrifice two creatures to make this card get sacrificed. So you either get a 6-5 or you get two, three death triggers actually because this also gets killed for, for our commander. So this either equals three treasure tokens or a 6-5. Both very nice effects in this kind of deck. Stronghold Hunter is just a very good search drop, there's when it's dealt damage, it deals 3 damage to any opponent, so it's pretty much a lightning bolt to face whenever it tables damage, and it's a 5-4, so it's a pretty solid blocker as well. Thunder Seal Colossus is a very good artifact for just 7 mana, because it has Trample Haste, and it only has Crew 2, which almost all of our creatures will be able to do, so 7-7 seven, seven, Trample Haste is nothing to scoff at. Udamox Crusher, one of the best big guys in the format, for 8 mana we can pretty much make it so annihilated too. So attacking the player makes them have to sacrifice two permits. It does have to attack each combat, but with an 8 8, that's hardly an issue. And then one Vulturous Raven, just a 2 3 with flying. It also has exploit, and with exploit to creature, you draw two and lose two. So it's draw power, and it can also use a sacrifice trigger, including itself, for our commander. So we can get treasure token as well as two cards into our hand with just one card. Alright, and then because we want to remove a bunch of stuff, we're playing pretty much all like the. Board wipes, I use that quote in quotation marks for our creatures. Harms of a Law makes a creature target player controls minus two, minus two, so it's a way to kind of deal a bunch of damage to small creatures. Breath Rapid deals two damage to each non dragon creature, which we're not playing any, and dragon cards aren't going to be super common, especially in Pop Commander, because there's not that many common dragons. So it's going to do two damage to a lot of creatures, especially the ones that are still around early game, can be destroyed like this, like all the mana dogs, everything like that. Crypt Lapse is pretty much one of the ways to guarantee mass removal for every creature because you can pay X and then X is equal to how much damage is going to be dealt to everything. Fire Cannon deals two damage to non pirate creatures. There's more pirates than non dragons, but doesn't matter because it's still enough to do a pretty wide amount of damage to a lot of creatures. You can also stack these effects too. So to do even more damage, so you can get up to like minus four, minus four, or four damage, however you want to put it, on multiple creatures, which should trigger a lot of commander. But you also want to make sure your commander itself is not in the crossfire. And then we also have cards to do mass sacrifice, so they pretty much make everyone sacrifice. So like Abysmal Gatekeeper, ETBs, each player chooses and sacrifices a creature they control. Crack the Earth, which makes each player sacrifice permanent. This one doesn't always hit creatures, but still one mana, everyone sacrifice permanent, it's still very nice, so they can choose lands or the mana box. Either way, they have to get rid of something good. Plus back Marauder, just ETP, everyone sacks, and in Innocent Blood, everyone sacks a creature. And then of course we just have our regular slew of removal, so we're playing just a lot of just basic removal spells. So Bone Shards, you either sacrifice a creature or discard a card to destroy a creature. So we can sacrifice one of our own creatures to destroy another creature, and that's two treasures for Mahadi for only one mana. Same reason we're playing Blown Splinters. Cast Down pretty much kills every non-commander creature in the format. Tinder's Edict makes a target player sacrifice a creature, and it also has flashbacks, so we can use this card twice. Death and Straight, destroy any creature without flying. Doomblade, destroy any non-black creature. Executioner Capsule is an artifact and then for one, and then we pay one in the black to tap it to sacrifice to destroy any non-black creature. We're playing this card, it's instead of a regular removal spell because it's an artifact so it kind of helps with our sub-affinity theme. Feed the Storm is going to be our only way to destroy enchantments, also can destroy any creature. We do lose damage equal to the mana value of the permanent, but that's too not too big of a deal. Murder, just destroy target creature. Seal of Doom is an enchantment that it's the three drop and then you sacrifice it to destroy target non-black creature and then it can't be regenerated, which can come up. Severed Strand is another one we have to sacrifice a creature to use and then we you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness to destroy any creature and opponent controls. So it's a way to gain life, pretty decent amount of life too since all creatures do tend to have big toughness. And then we get two triggers from Mahadi for two more treasures so it essentially recycles itself for the amount we paid. Spark Harvest, the exact same thing as Bone Charge Bone Splinters, we can sacrifice to get two Mahadi triggers, so two treasure tokens, or alternatively we can also pay 
Three of the black acts will destroy a target creature. A planeswalker, which planeswalkers don't exist in this format, so it's only target creature. Tenor states that blanket destroy target creature and it can't be regenerated. Terror destroys any non artifact, non black creature, it also can't be regenerated. Tragic Sip it makes a creature minus one, minus one, but it's also morbid. If a creature died this turn, it gets minus 13, minus 13. And because we're playing so many ways to kill creatures, is one of the main things we're doing with this deck, it's almost always going to have its morbid active. Venom destroys any non black creature, it can't be regenerated, but we do lose life equal to that target creature's toughness. It can hurt us, but the fact that it's only one mana is why we're running it and makes it worth it. Victim of the Night destroys any non vampire, non werewolf, non zombie creature. Not the most, like, narrow. Like, there's some good vampires and zombies, maybe even werewolves you might run into, but it can just hit most targets that it's worth running. And that is the deck. It's kind of a weird control deck. You're going to be playing a lot of removal, there's a lot of ways to deal with creatures for our payoffs as well as our artifact payoffs. It's an interesting deck. It's got a pretty fun playstyle. It's not like too obnoxious with the removal, so it's fun to play against, I think at least. I haven't had any people complaining about me playing this deck. It's very fun. Hope you all enjoyed it. And if you're looking to play Pop Commander games, there's a link to a server in the description with a very nice active Pop Commander community where you can play Pop Commander games over webcam with a lot of cool people, as well as the list for this deck if you want to export it or alter it however you'd like. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.